And um, welcome back, Patricks. Y'all look rested, happy, and and what? <laughs> yeah. Somebody asked me if I had the anointing. I said I have the annoying. <coughs> But, uh, but I couldn't say the annoying of God because he's not annoying. All right, we are in a class that we changed the name of it after about the second one because uh, the Lord told me to and because in Christ uh, had become sort of the theme that the Lord set up without us even trying to do that. And so I've been sharing on in Christ and I would like to continue to do that and we still have two other classes, I think, that are also emphasizing that, right? Kelly, what's the name of yours? In Christ Warfare. In Christ Warfare. So there's a lot of fighting going on inside of Jesus. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Never mind. <clears throat> All right, so... Let's begin this class by turning to the book of Galatians, chapter 3. Galatians, Galatians Galatians chapter 3, and let's look at uh, verse 6 and 7, if you please. <clears throat> S'il vous plaît. Por favor. Um, all right. Galatians 3 and verse 6. Even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness... Know ye therefore that they which are of faith the same are the children of Abraham. Okay, so the context of this, and we'll read some more all around in Galatians because that's a, a big point, uh, is the covenant, the covenant that was made with Abraham. <clears throat> and, um, and it's talking about what he believed and, um, you know, and what he believed about God and what he believed about uh, what he saw and about the covenant promise. Now, the New Testament confirms that he believed God, not the stars, but on the other hand, uh, I made the statement in the um, uh, firstborn class uh, dealing with Abraham that, um, that if those stars represented um, the many that are going to find Christ, <clears throat> that, that it doesn't represent that. And I said, because it's not going to be as many as stars, that's how many Christians there will be. Because there are, believe it or not, there's way more stars than any amount of even people that could be born. Okay. <clears throat> It represented, as this says, and we'll, we'll see it even more clearly here momentarily. Um, I, and I said in that class, I said it would represent, all of that together would represent one, the seed. It would represent Christ. It wouldn't be a bunch of little Christ. It would be all the magnitude of the one, the gloriousness of the one, the vastness of the one. Okay, so these scriptures are going to talk about that <clears throat> in Galatians, and uh, we'll, we'll look at that closer. But right now we're looking at it, uh, or Galatians is actually looking at it, in relationship to the covenant, <clears throat> the covenant that was made with Abraham, and it will uh, eventually say here that that covenant was a covenant that still is in force today. That the new covenant all has to do with the promises of Abraham. Okay? Anybody ever studied that out in Romans and in Galatians? All right. So let's go to um, verse 26. <clears throat> For ye are all the children of God by faith 
uh, in Christ Jesus. All right. So it is stating, basically, we just said, read that up there. Um, <clears throat> know ye, therefore, that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. That's verse 7, Galatians 3, 7. Verse 3, 26 says, For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. All right. So um, <clears throat> this, the verses up above, we're talking about um, the covenant, talking about Abraham, talking about believing God, and now you get down here, and it says the same thing when, in talking about being children of, of Abraham. Verse 7 up there, which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. Verse 26 says, for you are all the children of God by faith in, in Christ Jesus. Okay. So that's not referring to Jesus of Nazareth. That's referring to the fact, and again, Galatians will spell all that out. <clears throat> that's referring to the fact that we put Christ and, and then that we are in Christ. That's not talking about Jesus of Nazareth, the guy with the beard and the mustache. Oh, wait a minute. Um, and the halo. Um, because we're not in Jesus of Nazareth, or there would be in Christ warfare. <laughs> because... We can't all fit inside of him. You see what I mean? But the reality of the risen Christ, that's, the, that's our reality. And so many Christians are making the Jesus of the Gospels the reality of God. And that was the reality until he actually died to his individuality. And he rose, and we are now in Christ. Ephesians says it pretty clearly. For he has raised us up and made us sit together in heavenly places in him, in him. So we haven't just been joined to Christ like um, a marriage in the sense, uh, earthly marriage in the sense that two people are joined and then they say they're one. Okay, well... That's a shadow, and you get that uh, out of um, Ephesians 5, where it talks all about marriage and all this kind of stuff, and then at the end it says, but you know what, this is a great mystery. We're really not talking about, you know, just two people getting together and calling it one. We're talking about Christ and, and the bride. And so, um, so the scriptures are continually taking us out of our understanding of Jesus of Nazareth being what it's all about to seeing Jesus, the individual, go to the cross and literally die to that and was raised a new man. And that new man is, again, this reality of being in Christ. Okay? And you can... You know, just mark down the words new man and look it up and you'll see plenty of examples of it being uh, the truth that the new man is Christ and we are in him. And, uh, and from there, see, and again, we, we said something, I think, in our last class. We said to be in Christ is not an identity change. It's him. Uh, our identity was at the cross. We identify in his death. <clears throat> and now he is the life. He is life. See, he's not an identity. And if we make him an identity only, then we say, well, I have an identity change. And we, we point to Jesus. We say, well, you know, I'm identified in Christ. But you better understand what you're saying when you say that because 
To be identified in Christ means that you pass through the cross and the thing that you're trying to identify with him now in resurrection was put to death. And now he is the life in you, not an identity life, <laughs> you know. And remember, we use the example of a driver's license. And we said, well, you know, police officer says, well, let me see your driver's license, you know. And he's looking at the picture and he's going, uh, you know, is this you? And you say, no, sir, that's just a picture of me. I'm right here. You, can, you don't need that. I'm right here, you know. But we're, you know, yeah, try that. Anyway. <clears throat> and you all remember the other one that I pulled on him, right? Um, but, but, I mean, there's a truth there, and that truth is that card is an identification card, but it is nothing compared to you, the living you, it's like, you know, this is my identity. Well, that's not really my identity. There's a me that doesn't need an identity. I am who I am. You know, again, I'm not suggesting you do this with the police. I'm just using that as an example, okay? <clears throat> All right, so um, verse 26 again. For ye are all... The children of God by faith where? Where? Not in Jesus of Nazareth, but in the fact that we are now in him. Uh, Paul described it so much so that he said, in him we live and move and have our being. Okay? Have our being. Ooh. Don't mix that with the other class. In him as our being is a being situation. It's not a identifying with the being it is a change of being okay and that being is him and and there's no see there's no way to get around that because that's all, everything is tied to that for example you go to a well you know Ephesians is the is the bombshell for all of that kind of stuff it says the forgiveness of sins, uh, it says all these different, redemption and forgiveness of his sins in him. In other words, all that comes to you, all that we have claimed externally and by, like, okay, so let's put us over here and we're going to be smaller, you know. Uh, and so we go, all comes from Jesus said, no, no, there was a death to all of that. He took us into death. He didn't just take us and say, okay, now you're in me. You know, he brought us into death so that the, we wouldn't have to fight with our old identity. We could have a life that overrides whatever my old identity was and doesn't become my new identity, it's Jesus. Jesus is it. it we're not, there's not this word that's an identity that, that we go, oh, thank God for identification. There's this word that says he is all and in all, which we'll get in those scriptures in the Galatians version of that too, but it's also in Colossians chapter 3. <clears throat> all right, so... Read this one more time. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ. Okay, so there is, the, and this verse uh, continues on, so we're going to look at it in a little bit. Uh, but the first thing to recognize is, is the starting point, and that is faith. That we're in Christ and that there is such a reality. Faith, that there is such a reality. All right, well, why would, why would faith in that be so important? It's easily important because, because, number one, we put so much faith in Jesus of Nazareth that we don't even recognize that a whole new creation has taken place as the result of, of being in him. 
And um, so we, we have to literally change our faith to him in a completely different way, okay? It's a way that secures us forever and ever and ever, okay? We're the ones that are up and down about it. We go, well, okay, I think I got it. Now I understand it. And then we start, you know, we, ha we go through stuff. And we go, well, I guess I'm not in Christ, you know, because look at me. Well, first of all, I don't want to look at you. You know, I want to look at you here. And the scriptures... The scriptures um, uh, are going to get into that. So let's go to Galatians. Uh, well, we're still in three. Let's go to verse 15. We're going to have to work our way down to that other place. <clears throat> Galatians 3, starting with verse 15. Brethren, I speak after the manner of men, though it be but a man's covenant. He's talking about the covenant God made with Abraham. And he's, he's saying, he's about to say that that covenant still is in place. I don't care if the law came along later or not. It didn't annul it. Or as the scriptures use, disannul. But it didn't. It didn't remove the covenant with Abraham. And the covenant with Abraham was, so shall thy seed be, and he's going to describe that as one person. Okay. <clears throat> uh, brethren, I speak after the manner of men. Though it be but a man's covenant, yet if it be confirmed, no man disannulleth or addeth thereunto. Thereto. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. And he saith not, and to seeds as of many, but as, as, one, as um, one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. So he's saying, God made promise to Abraham and his seed. And in the New Testament, Paul is arguing with Jews who think that the law did away with the Abrahamic covenant and has now this is the way we're supposed to relate to God and Paul comes along who is a Pharisee and a Jew and you know Hebrew of, of Hebrews and all of that and says no 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 it didn't it didn't do away with that covenant that took place there and it's still to Abraham and his seed and, and just keep reading Galatians 3 and 4 and actually two parts of 2 over and over, and you'll see that he continually, continually is talking about Abraham and his covenant that he made, and four, all the way through four, actually, um, and that that covenant is the one that we're actually basing everything on, and that covenant to his seed was not talking about the Jews. It was talking about, you say, it was talking about Christians. No. It was talking about all who would be in him. Now you say, well, you're just splitting hairs. Paul stopped that splitting hair stuff because that's pretty much all he's doing in this book. <laughs> there you go, you see. Dennis is over there trying to anyway. <laughs> you brought me into that, brother. <laughs> all right. So let's, let's try it again, okay? Let's read this carefully. Brethren, how many brethren do we have here? You can be a girl and be a brethren or a sister. If you're a broke, <laughs> you can be a broken sister <clears throat> that cannot hold water, okay? <clears throat> Another scripture, but brethren, I speak after the manner of men, though it be but a man's covenant, yet... If it be confirmed, no man disannulleth or addeth to it. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. Stop right there. Give me everything you know about, I feel like uh, Vanna White. Give me, every, give me everything you know about Abraham, the covenant to Abraham and his seed. And you, you know, you can go off on all these directions. You can say, well... You know, the Jews, and then, you know, there was um, 
uh, Isaac and then Jacob and then, you know, Joseph and, and all of that and just go off into all of that. But in God's mind, according to Paul, according to your Bible, New Testament Bible, this is saying that that promise, and we see we didn't, we, okay, so 16. Now to Abraham and his seed where the promise is made. And if you just stop right there, meditate for a minute, and then read on. He saith not, and the seeds as of many. So, so if you throw Jews at me, you're throwing many. Right? Okay, is it possible that there could be Jews in here? Is it? No, it's not. Because right later on we're going to get into it and he'll say, neither Greek nor Jew nor bond nor free, Christ is all and in all. In all. Then this is... Christ is all, and in all is he, one, one seed. But your reply is correct in that we say we can say this. Uh, let's see. Jesus of Nazareth was a Jew, right? Paul was a Jew. Peter was a Jew. James, John. Bartholomew was a Jew. Okay. <clears throat> but once they enter into him, they enter through the cross. Neither nor. Right? Neither nor. There is neither Greek nor Jew. Bond nor free. Christ is all. And he's in all. Okay. So, um, Paul is, what he's trying to do is he is, now you remember, he's, he's writing to the Galatians. <clears throat> Several things that Paul did and was sort of his modus operandi. One is that he would go into a Gentile or Roman city, and when he'd go there, he would first go into the synagogue and preach to the Jews in that place. Peter was considered the apostle to the Jews. Paul was considered the apostle to the Gentiles, right? <clears throat> it says that in the scripture. That's not just somebody's designation. So, so Paul would go in there and he would minister, but for the most part, he would win more Gentiles, it appears, and um, spread it all over the world, all over the known world at that time, okay? But what, he, what is he doing? He's not really trying to minister to Gentiles or Jews. He's trying to bring them out of, well, he's trying to bring about neither nor. Neither Greek nor Jew, neither nor. But, you like that next word? Neither nor but. Christ. Christ what? All. What else? In all. Okay, well, this is, you know, you go, well, this is different. <laughs> you know, you, 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 have to, <clears throat> you have to look at it and say, well, this is completely different. Um, and there's, well, let's go ahead and read this. He saith not, and the seeds as of many, but as of one, unto thy seed, and he just flat out says it, which is Christ. So he's saying, this promise to Abraham was not made to you in the you sense. What do I mean by that? What do I mean by that? It's not made to you in the you sense. Because you were taken care of at the cross. So, but it says you're the children of Abraham. So you go, well, that's, that's contradictory. But this scripture go, you know, pulls it right up in the big middle of all that he's talking about there and says, but really there's only one. 
yes, we're all Abraham's seed by being in his son, by being in the one to whom the promises were made. To whom? It's a whom. It's not a, it's not a doctrine. Do you understand that? It's not a doctrine. We're not serving a doctrine of in Christ. We are in the one where there is neither nor. But Christ. And this I say, that the covenant, so he, he's, still, he's still riding this covenant thing. See? He's trying to show them that the covenant that they think was done away is the very road that God is trying to bring them all into. <clears throat> and this I say, that the covenant that was confirmed before of God, where? Where does it say it was confirmed? In Christ. Here's, well, the covenant, when's it going to be confirmed? When's it going to be settled? When's it going to be for sure? When did, well, it's settled, it's manifested, it's confirmed right here in him. With him being, because this is following, this is the very next sentence after, um, not of seeds as of many, but as of one unto thy seed, which is Christ. This is the very next one. And this is the confirmation of the covenant. Meaning what? Okay, so what does that mean? What does that mean? Um, it means that I'm going, okay, Abraham, you know, you got this promise from God. And really, the first book of the Bible is pretty much about you and or your family. <clears throat> so where is the confirmation of it? And he will say, you know, we can put the family over here. And he said, it's not confirmed over here. It's confirmed in the one. And that one is not Isaac or Jacob or, you know, Joseph or da 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 da. It's not those people. It's always been in this seed, this one, not, not Jesus of Nazareth, this resurrected one in whom we live and move and have our being. Okay, so, um, and this I say that the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ and I added these words so you don't get lost here. This other covenant, the law, which was 430 years afterwards, cannot disannul that it should make the promise of non-effect. So basically, to me, if I don't add those words, if you don't follow him, you're going to go, what? Okay, so let's just take it slow. And this I say, that the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ, so he's talking over here on my left hand, that's the covenant of Abraham that he's talking about. The law, that's the right hand, the law, which was 430 years after the first one in Abraham, the law, which was 430 years after, cannot disannul that it should make the promise of none effect. You see, do you see the dividing? That's why I add this, these few words here. Um, and this I say, that the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ, this other covenant, the law, which was 430 years after, cannot disannul that it should make the promise of non-effect. So, did that help? <laughs> it's talking about, and that one verse is talking about two covenants. He's talking about the covenant of the law, and he's talking about the covenant of Abraham. And he's saying, God made a covenant with Abraham and who? His seed. And this other law, this other covenant that came along that was under the law, cannot disannul that. It's still in force. Now, think how revolutionary that must have been for Paul to share that with the Jews. I mean, and trying to convince anybody. 
but he's a, he's a scriptorian, you know. He's a wordsman, a swordsman, you know, wordsman. He digs into the scriptures and he stays with the scriptures. See, and again, see, he's using Abraham uh, and the law in his teaching to teach Christ, which we look at the Old Testament book and we say, well, that's the Old, that's the old Testament, that's the Old Covenant, it's out of here. Well, it is as long as you see it in terms of the law and all of that. But if you see Christ in there, that's where the New Testament came from, right out of the Old Testament scriptures. Amen. Verse 18, for if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more promise. But God gave it to who? Abraham, Abraham by promise. See, he, he won't let up. He won't let up. Why? Because to him, there's only two people involved in this covenant. <laughs> there's Abraham and this seed that he says isn't many. It's one, and it's that one is Christ. Okay, so so why wouldn't why wouldn't um, why wouldn't it say that because uh, we we covered those scriptures? Why wouldn't it say that God took Abraham when he was called Abram, took him out, and he showed him all the stars of heaven, and and uh, he said, "So shall thy seed be." Why wouldn't Abraham go, man, I'm going to have a lot of kids. <laughs> Grandkids? This thing's going to go for a while. Like eternity, maybe? I don't know. I mean, it's just a bunch of stars up there. But somehow, and get this, somehow the scriptures here, in the fir very first one that we read, it's talking about the faith of Abraham. And it's telling us that those who have this faith are children, as it were, believing in their children of that faith. They're children of that faith. Ch they believe in that that all represents one. In the faith, there's, you know, who knows how many. In the faith that believed that, that there's only the one, there's, it's, I don't know what the number would be. But what, what are they doing? They're believing into Christ. They're not just believing at him. You see, into, not just at him. Okay. All right. <clears throat> now let's go to... Uh, verse 26 again, because we read that. That was one of our beginning ones. And, um, and then we're going to read uh, all the way down to 29. Okay, Galatians 3, 26 through 29. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Okay. You're, you're, you're a child of God. By your faith in him. Not him, but in him. You're a child of God, for you're all the children of God. You are a child of God by faith, not just that Jesus died on a cross. Yes, you must believe that. But that's the, that's the demise of you. <laughs> you have to believe in the demise of you. So it's hard to linger on that if you understand what's left. There he is, Jesus, the one. Okay. So for as many of you as have been baptized into Christ, see, not just baptized by Christ or in his name. Come on, religious ones. <laughs> Give it to me. This, that's not what it says, all those other things. It says for as many, as many how many as many, you know, we're not going to, the Lord's saying, I'm not going to put a number on it because you have free will. As many 
of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Okay? Yeah. Right. But I feel like God was like taking those many stars, just like you said, like Abraham saw it in one. Like you know, that's what I think. And that's what we want to do as we're conceiving. It's like all of that, and then kind of like this one is going to become many, but this many is just defined. So that's true. This one that's right. Too. Man, that's so good. Well, and Paul Paul uses that in First um, Corinthians chapter twelve, where he's talking about the body, and he says, "For as the body is many, but then he says the many are one, are one, and that one is Him. The one is Him." Okay. Well, okay. So I have many members. Sometimes I look at your little face and you go, and I go, "Okay, you have many members." You have many members, but it's still one body, Amen. right? And there's still one life flowing through all the members. But but cut off a member and see if all of the, see if the life uh, dies. No, the member dies because you're cut off from the life, the only life, the one life, oneness. All right. Um, again, verse 27. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Okay? So that what is he saying? You, if you're going to be put in him, there's only one life. You have to put on his life. Right? You know, you don't go in there and you go, oh, I'm alive in me, but my identity is Christ. See, that's the way many Christians use the teaching of identification. They still remain alive. There is no identification beyond the cross except a person, not a, a teaching, not a, you know, that reality. The, uh, the greatest identification is going to be at the cross. That's where you identify. I am dead. Now he's my life. What got off of that cross is not a bunch of dead people. was one and all those that were in him that believed where into him that's this that's the very word verse 27 uses. it doesn't say you know in so that we can we can fudge with its meaning it says into him into Christ and you go well, okay if I'm if I have um been baptized into that now baptism was that me and you that talked about baptism or who? yeah you mentioned some stuff but um you know the way i've always shared it is that there's three baptisms there's water baptism baptism of the holy spirit and baptized into his death romans 6 romans 6 doesn't mention water one time <laughs> it's being baptized into his death <coughs> Excuse me. So that you know, we're trying to figure that out, but it's not. It's not, and it has. You know, our baptism into His death. You can go down in water a whole bunch of times, meaning go get water baptism, and not one bit of that is going to baptize you into His death. That's something. That first of all, you have to acknowledge that happened when Jesus took us down into death. And you do what to that? You don't make it happen. You reckon on it. And remember, reckon is, <clears throat> is a bookkeeping term. You know, you, you, you put all these numbers down and everything, and then you also go across this way uh, with it and... Then, you know, the bookkeeper goes,
us, okay, let's start this. You guys really good doing that? Okay, it's uh, 808, okay. So now we went down, let's go across. 808, I'm okay. I'm not gonna have to put money in. <laughs> Any of you who've ever had to keep books know that that's, <clears throat> anyway, so, so once you do that, you go, well, I reckon I'm dead. Because down here is not a number, it's just dead. <laughs> so I, you, you go, well, I'm dead. I don't know, man. Oh, I'm dead. I reckon I am. <clears throat> That's a little hard on Texans because they got their own <laughs> de definition of reckon. All right. Verse 28. There's neither Jew nor, there it is, neither nor, Greek. There is neither bond nor, there it is, neither nor. There's neither male nor female, there it is again, neither nor. For ye are all one in Christ. We're one. You say, we won. Yes. O-N-E. Amen. We won. We go, can't you talk right? <laughs> we, we won. <laughs> How old are you? We won. All right, sorry. Okay, uh, faith in Christ. Faith. So verse 26 started with faith in Christ. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ. The next one, baptized into Christ. That's uh, verse 27, then the very next verse, Okay. And then the last one is all one in Christ, which is also, well, it's is verse 28, okay? So faith in Christ, you start with faith um, in its reality. You are learning the reality of that, and as you learn by the Spirit of God, you begin to have faith in it, even though you haven't reckoned yourself dead yet or living by oneness of it. Should I say that again? You start with faith, which is um, gaining from the Spirit of God the reality of being in Christ, okay? The Spirit of God starts dealing with you. You start seeing things in the Scriptures. So then eventually you, 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 have, you go, I have actual faith. I believe there is such a place as in Christ. I mean, that's a leap right there because most people are still just believing in Jesus of Nazareth. To believe that it's over here in another life, that's, that's I mean, you talk about a leap of faith, <laughs> but it's a good leap, okay? So you start with that. You start learning the reality of it, and as you learn that, then you, you un begin to understand how that comes about, baptized into his death you're baptized into Christ raised unto newness of life or the actual Greek word there is raised unto new life or into new life okay that's still Romans 6 4 who said that um and then, so you're re now you're reckoning on the reality. You don't just believe there is such a reality. I have faith that there is a reality. Now you're reckoning on that reality in terms of death to your old life and the reality of being in him. And then the final one is, then we're all one in Christ. Okay? So... Oneness in the one fills it up. Oneness in the one fills all things. He fills all things that are in him. Okay? So that last one of being, uh, let's, see, let's just read the scripture then. Uh, it's the end of verse 28. There's neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ. All one in Christ Jesus. You're all one in Christ. 
okay? You're all one, and you are, um, you're all one because there's only one. Okay? You're one because there's only one. And <clears throat> we could say, we could say, oneness fills Jesus. Ah, uh, no, not really. Jesus fills Jesus. And because we're in there, we put on Christ. I'm not Christ. We put on that life, that nature. So in reality, you know, we, you, we can make a God out of oneness. But that'd be wrong. We put our faith in the one. But our faith is that we're one with the one. <laughs> right? See, it's tricky because that there is a reality of oneness that holds you. But the, the, the faith that, that really makes it solid is that I am one with the one. See? <clears throat> I know. Sometimes it sounds like I'm talking in riddles. Maybe I am. I don't know. <clears throat> All right. Uh, Galatians. 6.15. Galatians 6.15 says this, For in Christ, okay, so where is that talking about? In the one. Where is that talking about? Not in Abraham's seed pertaining to the Jews, but or, or in Christianity. It's Christ. Well, if I'm saved, all the promises are mine. None of them ever belong to you. All the promises were made to Abraham and his seed. He saith not as unto many, but unto one. <clears throat> I mean, I, I used to, the church I used to go to a long time ago, they said, I, I believe, you know, I believe every promise in the book. And I'm kind of going, Okay, but none of them are yours. <laughs> you <know. laughs> okay, you can believe in it. You know. But didn't the scripture that we read say that the promises were to Abraham and his seed? He saith not as unto many, but as unto one which seed is Christ. I'm just making sure you understand what these scriptures are saying. Because we can go all, you know, this is just a fact. You, we can get filled with religion. Religion can so fill us that we can't even read the scriptures correctly anymore. It's true. And, you know, I think I'm one of the least religious people. I love Jesus with all my heart. I'm one of the least religious people, but I still find myself wrestling with religious religion at times. And I'm going, golly, when am I going to get over this? You know? <clears throat> I saw a bunch of you looking at me smiling going, when? <laughs> All right. Uh, this is Galatians 6, 15, 4. In Christ Jesus, neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. Do you believe that? Yes. Okay. So what does circumcision represent? It represents cutting away of the flesh. Yes. Just the sign of it. See, the God told Abraham, I'm jumping ahead on my Abraham class. I don't want to go too much. But he said, that's just a token. That's just a sign of it. Yes. It's not the deal. The deal is the cross. You know, it's just a token. It's just a, so, so Paul's backing that up here. He's going, look, you know, it doesn't, you know. Now imagine telling Jews that one. <laughs> Wait a minute. God gave this to Abraham. You're saying, Abraham, that this is the, this is the covenant and everything. Well, that was the sign of the covenant. You can, he said, well, okay, keep doing the sign of it. That's fine. But at least see the, you know, it's like a, it, it's, it'd be like driving down the road and there's a sign that says, you know, Disney World. 
and you see the sign and you go, okay, yeah, we've arrived. <laughs> no, no. And then you drive on in and you go, oh my God, look at this. It's just better than the sign. But there's surely some people standing in front of the sign going, this is it, see. God told us this is where Disney World would be, and there it is. <laughs> it's, it's sort of one-dimensional, but there <laughs> it is. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. But he did say something does avail. What is that? A new creature. Okay, so now the piece de resistance. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 5. And we shall close with these scriptures. And thou shalt be joyous and happy with smiles and laughter. <clears throat> or you'll just go, I know that scripture. and you know, It has no power to me. <laughs> it's not going to overtake me. All right, 2 Corinthians 5. Let's do 16 and 17. <clears throat> Wherefore, henceforth know we no man after the flesh. What? What is that saying? I don't know him after the flesh. So, so you stand there and there's somebody and uh, they're a Christian and you say, oh, I don't know you after the flesh. I didn't know you you're in your BC days, you know, before Christ. I know you, I know you now as a Christian and I'm fulfilling 2 Corinthians 5, 16. And, you know, God's saying, read the next verse. <laughs> Just, you know, right? <laughs> Just stop your silliness and let's get on with reality. Okay. <clears throat> Wherefore, henceforth know we no man after the flesh. Look at the next part of that sentence. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet know we him no more. Oh, my Jesus of Nazareth. <laughs> it's saying we we you know we read the gospels we know all about you know all the miracles that he did and when when the new testament got written not one of them was mentioned of jesus of nazareth most of the things that you have him teaching are not mentioned in the new testament because they're not trying to promote the Nazarene. They, they refer to the reality of Christ now. We knew him after the flesh. Do you know that you can read the Gospels and see this Jesus, this in Christ Jesus? Did you know you can do that in the Gospels? Like crazy. But if you just read the dead letter, you know, anybody can. If that were true, anybody can read that and say, I got it. But we know it takes the Spirit of God. Why would he send the Spirit? Why would he do that? You know, and I've heard people say, well, just read it. It's just literal. Just read it. <laughs> you can tell I know people like that. <clears throat> you know, just, just read it. Just, it's just literal. It, just, it says what it means. Okay, well, go, you know, your, your eye has been, your tongue has been offended me, cut it out. <laughs> I love messing with the literal people because you know, I got a whole bundle of those. <laughs> I got them from the, the fiery darts of the wicked, but anyway. <laughs> Though we have known Christ after the flesh, they did. They knew Christ after the flesh. Now, this is coming from the Corinthians, and the Corinthian people did not know Christ after the flesh. They never met him. That's a long way away from Jerusalem and Israel. They didn't know Christ after the flesh like, there he is. Look. He's walking on water. I know you. I know all about you. You do stuff we can't do. This is 
this being in him does more <laughs> than walking on water. <clears throat> so it goes on to say in verse 17, therefore, 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 I don't, I don't, we don't know one another after the flesh. We even knew Jesus after the flesh. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, you see where that comes from? It totally is saying, you know, that our lives as we knew them, not just in our B.C. days, our lives, we are known in him. That's the truth. That's what God wants us to know of him and in him. Okay. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. He's not the old after the flesh, after the flesh. When we say after the flesh, we're not talking about somebody sinful. Well, you're in the flesh. You know, I know you because you're in the flesh. You know, he's not talking about that kind of flesh. He's, he's just talking about any old red-blooded person. Uh, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. You are some, you know, the, uh, a lot of uh, translations are new creation. A whole, this is a whole new creation, okay? It's not the same, it's not premised on the same thing. It's premised on a person. Christ filleth all, okay? Um, he is a new creature, a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Now, in the Greek there, the real word passed away isn't past tense. It is they are passing away. So what does that mean? I thought if you're in Christ, you're a new creature. You are. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. He's a new creature. Old things are passing away. Well, am I a new creature, creature or not? Do you see the, what looks like a contradiction? It, just within those verses. If any man be in Christ, I'm in Christ. Then you're a new creature. Old things are passing away. Well, dang it. When is, you know, did the cross do it or not? Yes, the cross did it. Yes, you are in Christ. No, you have not gained the fullness of Christ in you yet. You are not fully conformed to his image. Paul said, it's not as though the guy, the guy who wrote this, you know the guy that wrote this, he said, it's not as though I had already attained, but I pressed towards the mark of the prize of the high calling in Christ. Well, he's not trying to attain to it. He's trying to have it swallow him up. He's not trying to make it happen. It's already real. But the spirit of God has to, you know, what did Paul say? I, you know, and he said this to many of the churches. He writes to the, the churches and, you know, it's the very first part, the early part of his letters are, you know, I pray for you that the God, uh, the Lord, uh, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. I don't need the spirit of wisdom, revelation, and knowledge of him. I already received him as my Savior. And God would say, no, you need this <laughs> pretty badly. <clears throat> um and, and goes on to talk about this, this fullness that we're, we have, but we must enter it. Amen. And, you know, you, you get the, and I need to stop. But anyway, you get that picture when Israel came, was coming out of Egypt. <clears throat> and you read it. God is not, at, once they cross that border and they're, they're out, God always refers to it as they are going to the promised land. They're going to the land. It's not that they got out of something. It doesn't spend a lot of time on what they left. It's about what they're going to. And so when they finally got there with Joshua, Jesus, that's the Hebrew word name for Jesus, they finally get there, God says, okay, and he says, I have given you the land. He does, you know, at a certain juncture, he goes, I have given you the land. This is before they entered in. I have given you the land. Now go in and possess this and possess it. And everywhere you put your foot, I will give it to you. Okay, so it is, it is ours, but it is ours to be possessed. And, you know, 
I don't know, I mean, I know a lot of people who teach this, but I don't know anyone that's attained yet. But the one thing that I, I, I appreciate about that is that Paul, that there are some like that that say, I have not yet attained, but I'm pressing toward the mark. I'm pressing. I am not fooling around, and I'm not just saying, well, I'm in Christ, so I can act any way I want because I'm still in Christ. Amen? Amen. It's like, I, no, I want the fullness of the life. That's who I'm after. And I want it to fill me from top to bottom. So, so there is a, a danger of teaching in Christ, and that danger is that people will just say, well, it doesn't matter then. It's already done and settled, and I'm in Christ, and da-da-da. And they're, they're, they are, I don't know what the best words are, they're stepping into a snare because they walked away from possessing the land and they, you know, they continue to live as if they never entered it. <clears throat> I believe in my heart that our goal, our desire is not to know the doctrine of it so that we feel assured of, of salvation. I believe that there's a person worth knowing, that there's a person that is that Christ of in Christ. But it is the Christ of in Christ, not the in Christ message. It's him. And once you, 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 can, you can possess all kind, you can take all kind of ground, but never give up, never stop, never, never camp, you know? Never camp there. But that's going to take a that's going to take a desire. Paul's desire was there. I press, I press. You know, when you press, you're press pushing up against. You're you're building up muscles, but you're going through whatever you have to go. I still want Jesus. I want Him all my life. I I want more of Jesus, less of me. Well, that's a that's one who's going to possess. You know. Anyway, so let's pray. Father, thank you for your spirit who will break the bread of life of this and that it will not just be teaching or doctrines that make us feel better about ourselves, but it will stabilize us to be able to pursue you without fear. So we thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen.